Preview. The IXP started in about 2004, initially with three members, um, and this was purely volunteer driven because the members understood that uh, VSAT capacity was very dear at the time. And with members buying less than five megabits on average each, any traffic you could save was well worth the saving. Um, the IXP was primarily delivering mail, SMTP. Um, there was very little other content in existence. Um, to also drive the, the mail demand, a lot of ISPs gave out free email accounts with their own domain, which also served to advertise them, but kept a lot of local traffic local. Email was also very big at the time uh, because there wasn't a lot of content that Zambians knew about or wanted to access and the web was still a niche within Zambia. The initial IXP was set up at Zamta, who was the incumbent, and that was driven by the need to connect with DSL, which everyone had because that was a standard means of communicating. The initial equipment was um, provided for by members. Um, then around 2006-2007, the equipment was donated. This led to standardization in the IXP. Everyone had the same router, there was resilience on the switches, and it was a very stable platform. That was okay until um, the point at which Google content became available locally. The, at that point, the amount of local transit was sufficient to break the equipment which then meant that the members now had to invest individually in terms of routers and switches. So members had to come with their own gear in order to keep pace with the consumption. We have the simple setup of a rack and a root reflector combined with two switches. Um, each ISP in turn connects to the root reflector, advertises their routes and uh, in turn each Let's uh, get connected to each other value of There was a lot of work to convince the ISPs, um, but the work wasn't so much around um, the need, the work was around the how. Um, so, how do you get an MOU in place? Is the exchange going to be free? Um, what happens with asymmetrical carrying? So, I'm receiving more traffic than I'm sending out. Um, does someone pick up that cost? The changes we've seen since 2004 have been twofold. Um, the first change happened when VSAT capacity um, started to fall out of favour because terrestrial fibre had arrived in Zambia, which meant lower latencies. At that point, um, the ratio of local content dropped to be minuscule because people started to consume more and more international transit. So our local content was you know, less than 2% of our total um, consumption. What that meant is the IXP itself went through a dip where people were going for your no, well-known websites and very little local content existed. Thereafter, to keep pace with the demand as well as keep transit costs down, uh, the community started approaching CDNs like Google. Once that content was available in country, we saw a tremendous spike in um, local usage of the IXP. As iConnect, we made a decision to approach Google um, to host a Google Cache. We put traffic together to justify Google to bring in a cache engine in Zambia. After much discussion, we ended up getting the cache in country and we agreed to host it um, at iConnect and then peer it into the exchange. Um, that meant all the exchange members could then pick up Google traffic locally. It reached a junction that there would have to be a cost recovery model attached to that. And once that was agreed, um, the process to agree to that was extremely painful because uh, members did not want to pay for what they saw as free content. But at the same time, the IXP itself didn't have the means or the capacity to deliver the, the transit capacity into the Google Cache in order to populate it. Um, and there's a lot of distrust around how much does one person get versus the other, how do we pull it, um, 
because someone's using maybe five megs, another person's using 100 megs of the same source. How does that thing get built? And the process to reach that agreement took a few months. But once it was reached, um, I believe we've moved beyond that, that members understand that there are some services you can pay for at a very economical rate. I connect, yes, wanted to give the Google Cash for a very long period for free to all the uh, members, but along the way they felt now we are growing. Tomorrow, Today we are doing maybe 60 meg for updates. When we are going to need one gig, who's going to pay for this one gig? So to, to, to safeguard their, of course, they can't do that for free. They are a business, they are not a charity organization. They come up with a pricing model, which all ISPs have agreed to. This is the best we can do for now. But going forward, what I would love to see is coming up with a model that supports or that uh, contributes to the updating of the Google Cash, not necessarily ISPs paying for connectivity to the services. There's a very big difference. I, I don't want us to put a value to access the services which are supposed to be neutral. I know there's a value to it to create that platform. So instead, I would rather participate in creating the platform, contribute to the cost of creating the platform. Over the last 18 months, the IXP has grown from between 8 to 12 megabits average throughput um, to now over 400 megabits of traffic um, locally at the exchange. And that's purely driven by um, Google content. So the more sort of content providers we get in, the better it will be for the local members. And now I believe um, there is definite financial value in having um, the Google peering locally. I have, uh, for example, uh, 20, 120 meg demand for content through Google. If I get that 120 through the international connectivity, I would pay through my nose. But getting it from the cash, which is sitting in Zambia, which has been updated, for example, using about only 40 meg, that's a benefit only to Zamta. Now you can multiply by, 100, uh, by 13 ISPs. If Zamta is, you compare the difference between the 40 meg to update the cash and 120, the benefit, if you multiply it by, by 13 ISPs, that's extremely significant. Previously, just to give an example, when a member's link went down, for example, into the IX, uh, mail, you know, there's no time delay. You send mails out of your outbox, you don't care. But now we've noticed if our link to the exchange goes down, you know, the phone rings within three minutes from another ISP to say, what's happening, the link's gone down. My international consumption has gone up because now what would have been routed locally or some spikes and goes through the international links. As a result of the ISP, there's been benefits for quality of service. With YouTube being local within Zambia, uh, Zambia is starting to get used to streaming content, not buffering as a small thing. So when YouTube starts to buffer, they view that as a degradation of service. Whereas two years ago, buffering YouTube was the standard. So you put your video and you put it on pause and you walk away and you come back and play it after five minutes. So the expectation of the user has gone up a notch and with more and more local content, that'll continue to happen. The relationships between the members and I would say two incumbents, uh, just for the example. The incumbents being where the exchange is. The relationships have been good from a physical hosting point of view. So we've never had an issue with them wanting to kick out the eyes or take it over. But from a members coming in view, there have been issues around connectivity media. When members moved away from DSL to fiber, all of a sudden the incumbent no longer had a monopoly on the connectivity means to the IXP. This meant members could subcontract their own fiber providers 
and that led to issues of accessibility permissions into the exchanges, into the incumbent's location. Once that happened, there were a few disputes and it was resolved to a large extent, but it did mean that uh, members had started pushing for neutrality in terms of the location. IXP by its nature is neutral. Everyone has a connection to that. But it's neutral in inverted commas because it's not very neutral because it's sitting at Zamta. So if we say all services, let's put them at IXP because by definition, IXP is neutral. Yes, makes sense technically, but some ISPs would feel like that's not neutral. It's actually sitting at Zamta. From an IXP that's purely volunteer driven, there's a lot of issues around um, politics purely because it's a perfect democracy. Everyone has equal vote and everyone has equal say into what goes where, what happens and how it happens. So once you've got that um, type of setup, it's very difficult to sell an idea that all the members will buy into. And that has been part of our experience that if the initial MOU or the initial agreements had um, policies in place regards who can vote, how they can vote, um, what requires buying from all members and what requires a subset of members to decide on, I believe the ISP would get a lot further. With regards to managing politics, um, in an IXP that's purely volunteer driven, there has to be a lot of lobbying. The relationship between the players in, uh, the, in the ISP association has been good. Not, we are competitors, so you expect uh, not very smooth, but smooth enough to come together and drive the same agenda. Uh, we we'll always have uh, divergent views and the, the, the good thing is that we have a common uh, objective. The regulator has started asking questions on how they can better it and what they can do to improve IXP in order to improve the quality uh, of access of local content. But prior to that, um, there wasn't a lot of uh, regulatory involvement. We would like the regulator and the IXP to be more involved. The primary reason for it, for the level of involvement being very low is that the IXP is not an independent body. Um, the ISP is run by the ISP Association of Zambia, uh, which means it's just a room where routers exchange information. But if the IXP itself had to be independent, that means it could lobby the regulator for uh, both regulation, regards who can peer, what can peer, um, lobbied for commercial assistance where needed as a separate entity. Because within the ISP Association of Zambia, the IXP is lost to the regulator. The change to the penetration levels and the consumption of internet has been driven by a large part due to the falling international prices. This has meant that content has become more economical for the end user. It means content is delivered quicker. It means that local users are starting to link up your normal social media um, type experience. It's starting to generate the excitement, it's starting to generate the traffic. And people are starting to understand that the internet is there and I can contribute in some way. Whether it's my own Facebook page, whatever else it is, I am doing something on the internet. This internet cafe, we started it in uh, somewhere 2005. So we started the internet cafe because we saw how internet was becoming a problem to some people to access. Because by then, internet was almost an, uh, a, a, what, a luxury. And now people can buy cars, can do what, can do their research, schoolwork, everything they are doing to the internet. I use well, uh, Facebook. That's how I'm familiar with Facebook, so it's very easy for me to, to communicate with, uh, with my friends. Uh, I've got uh, two friends, one is, is in UK uh, and the one, another one is 
in South Africa. So we have to, we used to change the information, ideas, and so many things. I started uh, using the internet uh, a week ago. I use it to communicate with my friends, knowing new friends, and then knowing things that I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, it has been good. I really, I really enjoy it. The, the world is changing, so we have to change, we have to follow. Most of the internet consumption is within the capital. Um, that needs to change. The internet needs to be pushed out into um, the smaller towns initially, before we even think of um, rural consumption of the internet. For the future of the Zambian exchange, I'd like it to reach a point where it's a self-sustaining entity and it's no longer under the auspices of the ISP association. Once it's a self-sustaining entity, that means it can go after new clients and not stick with the traditional carriers peering there. That'll mean that it'll reach commercial independence and once it's got commercial independence then it can grow as an entity. If the IXP had to extend beyond the traditional carriers they would start to attract businesses like um, the banks that would need peering, um, certain large organizations that would prefer to peer as well as international players coming into the market who might be delivering services to multiple ISPs within Zambia. So instead of them having an individual cable to everyone they could pick up everyone's traffic at the IX. We are in a process to do, to implement e-government. E-government means services, means a lot of demand by citizens to get traffic from uh, uh, the government. Because with e-government we are going to be doing a lot of e-learning through e Ministry of Education, uh, electronic voting, electronic, a lot of things. So if we uh, have, we enhance the exchange, regardless of where these uh, uh, services from the government are going to be hosted, whether Zamtel, any other ISP, uh, the benefit to the citizens, would, the, 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 the accessibility by the citizens to these services will be seamless. If the ISP had the funding to team up with innovation hubs, uh, to team up and um, lobby the regulator, lobby the banks, lobby those sort of people to encourage additional local content, I think we could get to a point where we could start to aim at maybe 10 to 15 percent of the traffic being within Zambia. And I think that will result in cost savings for the consumer as well. My advice to people wanting to start an exchange point is to think it through carefully. Um, so to involve um, either business development or commercial entities within the organizations in the development of the IXP. Um, a lot of IXPs are purely driven by technical need and unfortunately um, geeks tend not to make very good products for sale at the end market. And we've got to realize that the IXP is a product um, whether it's not for profit or for profit, it is a product that you need to sell. It's a product you need people to buy into. So for me that would be the advice, that don't keep it technical. Involve the commercial and the business development teams in those ISPs or whatever companies that want to set up an exchange point. If I was to start the IXP again, the things I'll do differently would be one, um, to make sure the MOU is more open and inclusive. Um, two, to start IXP uh, with a more formal um, contract rather than just a standard MOU which it is currently. Um, the third thing would be to set targets for the IXP. The IXP was set with a single goal in mind which was to keep local traffic local. But sometimes an uh, overview, a goal that big doesn't actually uh, mean anything achievable because whether you're exchanging one kilobit or one megabit, it's still keeping local traffic local. But I think if there were metrics that were set that in the first year one hit 10 megs, second year 20 megs, 30 megs, as well as financial targets and it's run like a normal commercial enterprise, I believe the IXP would be in a far, 
far more advanced position than it is now. I'm choosing a location for an IXP from uh, the experience in Zambia is that it has to be somewhere where all the members are close to, somewhere that has good uh, connectivity, good power, but at the same time it has to be neutral. Uh, we've experienced that having it in a non-neutral venue does impact on the ability for the exchange to grow as well as um, trust between members on who owns what at the exchange. Uh, setting up an IXP is definitely uh, it's an, it's a no-brainer. Simple logic, the cost of setting up a subsea cable is extremely expensive compared to the cost of putting a, a fiber cable in the ground. So why take local traffic, which has a cheaper route to the destination, to the infrastructure, which is extremely expensive? So if you, uh, you are a country, you definitely have to have an IXP. It's definitely a way to go. We started very small. It, it was really something that, uh, it was a milestone. It was one of the good things that were done in the ISP industry in Zambia. Preview. Preview.